Hello, and welcome to an episode of ES Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate uh, AOMEI's Partition Assistant Home Edition, which is free for private and commercial use. Uh, I do have the link in the video description, and I will also have a link of uh, the address at the end of this video. So you can download your free copy. Uh, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to change a, a label, how to change the drive ladder, and how to convert uh, partitions from primary to logical and vice versa. Now, the label uh, isn't all that important. However, you can use labels to identify what the partition is. For example, look at C. C label is Vista. Now, I labeled it Vista because this lets me know that this partition contains Vista's operating system. Now, you'll notice Z, which is over here, and it's also highlighted up here, is labeled Recovery. Now that is recovered is my operating system's recovery partition. Now labels do come in handy because it's not required, but yet it helps to identify what the partition contains. For instance, look at D. I have D here and I have it labeled as data. That's because all my videos that I do for YouTube and all my uh, set up discs and all the other stuff, my movies, uh, my downloads, everything I have is on this drive. And you'll notice that there's also another partition in front of it called E. And it's also labeled virtual memory. This is where I have virtual memory running through Vista. Now I'll explain all, th all that in another video to help improve uh, Vista and XP's performance, but we'll get to that some other time. So you can see that you can name these labels and stuff to identify as to what it is. And look at this, for disk 4, which is J, it's labeled 2GB, which I have it uh, 2 gigabytes, and CF to identify that it's my compact flash card. So, as you can see, labels do come in handy when you're trying to identify which drive is which. Now, to change the label, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is select the, drive, the partition, which in this case we're going to do G, because as you can see, G does not have any label. We can right-click it, and you'll choose Change Label. You also have the same function over here. You also have the function up here. And it says change label there in the partition menu. So you have three ways you can do it. So let's right click, choose change label. And now all you have to do is enter a label for the partition. So in this case, I'm going to use ES Repair Demo. Now you can use up to 32 characters as a name. And as far as I know, I don't believe it goes any higher, but 32 is the limit to my knowledge. And then once you get your uh, name on there, then you choose OK. And you'll notice that it shows that it's changed. But keep in mind, if you've seen my other videos for this tutorials for the software, you'll know that you have a pending operation down here in the corner. Once your operations you confirm, then you can choose apply. And then it's going to tell you that drive letter, 
the partition label that it was and the partition letter or the partition label it's going to be. It'll tell you how much time it would take, then choose proceed, and then choose yes. Now when it's finished, it will reload the drives and your new label is in place. Now it's not required for the label, but it's mostly used and it helps to identify what the partition is being used for. Especially if you got uh, dual boot systems, uh, such as I'm planning on doing this one, to have both Vista and Windows 7 on it. Uh, you can put them on two different partitions and label it according to the operating system that's on it. And it does come in handy. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to change a drive letter. Now it's pretty weird how the computer or the operating system assigns drive letters. However, you can change them on your own. Keep in mind that if you do change a drive letter Keep in mind that some programs rely on the drive letter, and I'll show you in a moment here. But first, uh, you can choose any kind of drive letter you want as long as it's available. Now, this one here is C, which is usually your system or your operating system uh, partition. It's always labeled C. Uh, then the next partition. And it goes on to the next drive, and each partition is labeled to a drive letter. Now, you can change these. Now, to change, we'll change this one that we did earlier in another video. We'll do this and change the drive letter. Now, all you have to do is you can right-click, choose Advanced, and then you can choose drive letter or you can come over here and choose drive letter or you can come up here to partition menu and then choose advanced and then drive letter so again you have three choices three places you can go well, I'm going to right click to partition and then I'm going to change advanced and then change drive letter now, when the window comes up, it will show that it changes drive letter. It shows its current letter, which is G, and the new drive letter is selected as none. Well, if you were to click on that, it will drop down a list that will give you additional letters that you can use. Now, you can't reassign a drive letter that's already being used. Now, if you want to use a Pacific drive letter, you may have to do some joggling between drives to get to the arrangements that you want. Now, for instance, we're going to change G to P. And it'll say change drive letter G and then a new drive letter will be P. And then choose OK. Now, as you'll notice down here, it does show that having a P drive as a letter. Now, you got your pending operation down here. Choose Apply. You'll see the overall, what it's going to do. And then it's going to take about 30 seconds. So, choose Proceed, and then choose Yes. And then it's completed, choose OK. Now, it's going to have to reload this, the drive and there you go. Now your partition has a new drive letter. Now, be advised that some programs, as I mentioned earlier, do require what uh, rely on these drive letters. And if you change a drive letter, chances are you're going to have to change the shortcut icon for that particular program. For instance, you can go to, let's go to desktop. We'll choose Internet Explorer. And choose Properties. Now, right here, as you can see, it shows at the target. It shows a drive letter. 
and then the location. So if you were to change a drive letter, you may have to go to your program shortcut and change the target drive letter so the computer or the operating system knows the new drive letter to launch your program. And that's all you have to do. Now, the other thing that we can do is now I've showed you how to uh, change a label, how to change a drive letter. Now, I'll show you how to convert your, uh, prim er, your primary partition and logical partitions. Now, keep in mind, if the partition will be used to boot up a system or an operating system, it has to be a primary partition. If you're just going to store data and programs on it, then you can use either primary or logical. But keep in mind, primaries allow the system to boot. Logical only stores data. Now, to do this, all you have to do is select a partition, as I do here. Then you come over here to the left, and you'll notice it says convert to logical. Now, it'll say either convert to logical or convert to primary, depending on what the, the partition's can, uh, flag is. If it's primary, it'll say convert to logical. If it says logical, then it'll say convert to primary. And it's very simple. You can right-click it. And then choose Advance, and then choose Convert to Logical. Or you can come over here, as I've shown, and then click. Or you can come up here to Partition, Advance, and then Convert to Logical. So you have three places. Let's right-click the Partition. We'll go to Advance, and then Convert to Logical. Now, it's going to be a... Uh, a message saying it's going to uh, select a partition which gives its name and it's going to be converted from a primary to a logical and then you choose OK now as you can see here this is the end of it this is show you what it's going to look like after it's finished you get your icons down here to your legend that shows you what the colors stand for now now we come down and we have our pending operations. We'll choose apply. In the overall, you'll say it's going to convert it from primary to logical. It'll take about 30 seconds. And now we'll choose proceed and then choose yes. And it's, it's completed, reloads the drive, and now you have a logical partition. Now keep in mind, primary partitions are new, you, required if the partition is going to be a booting up to an operating system. Logical is for anything other than operating systems. You can store anything on it. You just cannot boot from it. Now, and again, we'll do the same thing. Let's say you have a logical partition as we do here. You'll notice over here that now it says convert to primary. You can click on it and then choose OK. Now, as you can see here, it, it has changed it back to primary. Now, we need to do our pending operation. Go up here and click Apply. It's going to show you that it's going to go from logical to primary. Approximately 30 seconds. Choose Proceed. And then choose Start. Now, another thing I want to show you is down here, if you need any help, you can click on the Help button. And it will help you uh, 
identify to what you need to do, how to start the walk through, and things like that as I'm just now showing you. So we'll click proceed and then choose yes. And then choose OK. And there you have it. It's as simple as that to where you can convert a primary to a logical or logical to primary. And that's all there is to it. This has been a presentation for ES Repair. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. We do have other tutorials for this software. And we also have other do-it-yourself videos on our channel. And uh, stay tuned for more tutorials that I will have on this video on this software. We appreciate your uh, time for watching the video. Thank you for watching.